once touted a partnership, they still do, without limits. Today, that partnership between China's Xi Jinping and Russia's Vladimir Putin, it's been on full display. The leaders holding four hours of informal talks on day one of Xi's state visit. Now, he's the first world leader to be welcomed in Moscow since the International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant for Putin over alleged war crimes in Ukraine. China has not condemned Russia's invasion, and with his forces struggling to make gains, Putin is looking to signal that he has a very powerful ally. Standing shoulder to shoulder, two authoritarian leaders defiantly push back against Western values, NATO and the United States. For Russia's president, Xi's visit is a diplomatic coup, showing much needed international support as Moscow becomes increasingly isolated. I am very glad that you found it possible and found the time to come in the evening and talk in an informal, friendly atmosphere about all issues that interest us. For Chinese President Xi Jinping, it's a chance to play a global peacemaker and to project China's power in the face of warnings from the United States. The message from the U.S. is clear. Beijing will endure harsh sanctions if it provides Moscow with weapons for the war in Ukraine. Xi and Putin are determined to craft a new world order, one that, according to them, does not follow dictates from the world's sole superpower. Uh, we are partners in comprehensive strategic cooperation. It is this status that determines that there should be close ties between our countries. Xi and Putin were expected to discuss Beijing's 12-point peace plan, which calls for negotiations between Moscow and Kyiv. But it doesn't mention a withdrawal of Russian troops from Ukrainian territory. It's an omission not lost on Ukrainians. One dictator has found another. They attract each other. But it will not change much if they get support for the war from China. It seems like some kind of game, like they want to tease the Western world. That's my opinion. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has made it clear that no peace can be achieved as long as Russian troops continue to occupy and attack his country. And he isn't interested in giving any Ukrainian territory to Putin. Zelensky and Xi are expected to discuss the war on the phone in the coming days. All right, we want to bring in our chief international editor, Richard Walker. Richard, when we look at these two presidents, um, they're not standing on equal footing. I mean, these are not a meeting of two equal men when we're talking about their power. Uh, no, that, that's true. I mean, Russia is really extremely dependent now on China. I mean, if we just look at the situation that, that these two men find themselves in, you know, Russia, it's now more than a year, of course, since it, it, it invaded Ukraine um, back in last February. Vladimir Putin was hoping that he would defeat Ukraine quickly, that he would uh, install a favorable uh, regime there to him. Obviously, that war has become uh, an extremely difficult conflict for him. He's lost huge numbers of men. He's lost huge numbers, uh, uh, amounts of materiel. Um, he's lost the faith of of many countries around the world. If you look at how di diplomatically isolated Russia is, he's completely lost Europe as customers for Russian energy, which was, you know, his biggest kind of market for Russian energy. He's turned NATO against him. He's consolidated NATO. It's adding new members. So he's very much uh, in a difficult spot. Xi Jinping, China, is really the only major friend that he has uh, on the world stage. And, and I wonder, does Xi Jinping, is it, in, is it in his interest for there to be peace in eastern Ukraine, or would maybe a low-grade conflict work out better for him? Well, there's been an awful lot of kind of reading of the runes about this recently, about what does China really want in this conflict. Now, China's always insisted that it, it's neutral in this, that it doesn't have a, any, any uh, kind of stake in this conflict, uh, and it simply, you know, believes in principles such mm -hmm. as... Um, 
the sovereignty of nations and territorial integrity. And these are kind of like sort of technical diplomatic terms, but they basically mean don't invade countries, don't take away their territory. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, China has been saying that. But on the other hand, they also say that they understand uh, what they see as uh, Vladimir Putin's reasons for, for this war. And Putin basically says, NATO provoked me, NATO's trying to expand further into the East. It wants to add Ukraine as a member. So he feels that he's justified to attack because he's sort of stopping NATO in his tracks. Is, is it in um, Xi Jinping's interest then to provide lethal weapons to Russia that could be used in Ukraine? Yeah, so here we kind of take the question one step further, don't we? Because, well, if Xi Jinping is a little bit torn on you know what's really a good outcome in Ukraine, mm -hmm. you know, because obviously if he if you believe in territorial integrity, then it, it's really a no no what Vladimir Putin has done, but also he doesn't want necessarily Vladimir Putin to be rolled over by the West, uh, by the the Western um, su supplies of military supplies to Ukraine. He doesn't want Vladimir Putin to be defeated, to have a collapse of Russia on his doorstep. And to have, you know, a real friend in standing up to the United States, which is China's big obsession, um, standing down. So there the question emerged, well, well, is China going to provide weapons? Well, so far it hasn't done that. And China has been wary about becoming a target for Western sanctions. And I think an interesting factor here is that um, while China says, you know, it won't be bossed around by America about what it can or cannot do, mm -hmm. it's also got an eye on Europe. Mm -hmm. And that for China, it's very important to try and keep Europe and the United States as far apart from each other as possible. And certainly in European capitals, they've been pretty appalled by the amount of uh, rhetorical, diplomatic and economic support that mm -hmm. China's been giving to Russia so far. But if China did cross that Rubicon and start providing big weapons to, to Russia, yeah. the, the Europeans would really have a rethink. Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to, to see. And there's also the, the, the notion of Xi Jinping as this um, almost a global statesman now, you know, following that deal with Saudi Arabia and Iran. Richard, as always, thank you. Well, I'm joined now by Tim Rulig. He is the senior research fellow with the German Council on Foreign Relations here in Berlin. He is also the author of the book, China's Foreign Policy Contradictions, which looks at Beijing's attempt to influence media, politics, and information in Western countries. Mr. Rulli, it's good to have you on the program. I, I want to pick up on this, this, this notion of contradictions in, in these two presidents to, that we saw today and their relationship, Vladimir Putin, Xi Jinping, they want the world to see them as partners, standing side by side, being on the same page with the same goals, almost as equal partners. Is that, is that the truth? Is that what they really are? Yeah, to some extent. Thank you so much for having me, first of all. Um, I really think that we do see uh, really balancing uh, 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 issues for China here. It is one example, once more, of a contradiction on the one side. China has really a strong interest in keeping Vladimir Putin in the Kremlin, in keeping uh, Russia as an aligned partner in its geopolitical tensions with the United States. On the other hand, it relies on uh, Western uh, cooperation with Western countries, primarily Europe, not least in the technology field. So once more, sort of China has really a contradiction that it faces and it needs to find a good way on balancing these different interests. We know that Beijing has put forth the, this plan for ending uh, the conflict. Is that what Xi Jinping really wants to see? And I, I wonder, wouldn't it be in his best interest to have a simmering conflict in Ukraine to go on for years to distract the U.S. and Europe while he takes care of his plans for Taiwan? Well, frankly, I think that would be the ideal scenario that you've just described. The question to China is really, is Russia strong enough uh, to keep the status quo? So it may sound like uh, an easy thing to keep the status quo as it is, but uh, keeping that uh, war in Ukraine in a, in a hang, in a balance, uh, is in itself a really complicated matter for Xi Jinping. So, and I would also be quite skeptical sort of of this so-called peace plan. I mean, if mm -hmm. you look at the document itself, it's entitled as being a position paper by the Chinese. And I think that's really what it is. 
China explains its position in this uh, situation, in the situation of war, but it's not outlining any uh, way to peace. So I don't think it is a peace plan. And it, frankly, it doesn't even claim to be one. And the, the fact that China has not c condemned what Russia is doing in eastern Ukraine, violating the national sovereignty of another country. Is that Xi Jinping, is that him thinking long term, allowing himself maneuvering room if and when China invades Taiwan? Absolutely. I think that uh, Xi Jinping and China are playing this very smartly at this point. Mm -hmm. They are making clear they stand with the sovereignty, sovereign integrity, uh, without sort of detailing which borders of Ukraine they actually accept as the sovereign borders. So they're not really taking sides against Russia, he even though sort of signaling that the principle that also serves their own goals, their own interests, uh, is something that they want to keep and uphold. So this is sort of really signaling uh, um, to uh, the rest of the world, Taiwan is ours and the sovereignty of uh, China can be violated. Do we ever reach a point with um, this war where Xi Jinping says it's now the right thing for us to do when, if we send lethal weapons to Russia to be used in Ukraine, knowing full well what that will trigger in terms of sanctions and other problems for him. Do you think that, that we're going to reach that yeah. point? It's not impossible, but unlikely, I think. Uh, and I think the main concern from Xi Jinping and China really is the fall of uh, the uh, uh, of Putin's regime in the Kremlin. Because if you face it, uh, if uh, Putin would fall, this could either mean a more pro-Western government, but it could also lead uh, an ultra-nationalist uh, getting uh, a hold in the Kremlin, like uh, Mr. Prigozhin. And this is also a nightmare for China, not least uh, because they share a very long border with Russia and uh, any troubles up there would be very disturbing to the Chinese as well. So China has a very strong interest in Putin remaining in the Kremlin. And the question is, if he gets really under pressure, mm -hmm. what's going to happen? How are the, going, the Chinese going to react? Is that going to change the calculus? At this point, I find it rather unlikely that they are going to send weapons and ammunition, but it's not in entirely impossible. Tim Rulig with the German Council on Foreign Relations here in Berlin. We appreciate your time tonight and your valuable insights. Thank you. Thank you so much.